Hi, welcome to Eat Freely. This is Allergen Friendly Cooking with Enjoy Life's chef, Kendra. I'm Liz Lotz. I'm a marketing editor here at Vitacost.com. This is Tammy Rothman. She's our food category manager at Vitacost. We'll meet Chef Kendra here in a minute, but first I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I'm sure you all have very busy lives and a lot going on, so thank you for hanging out with us for the next hour. Um, I know some of you are joining us because you're a VitaVoice member. That's awesome. Welcome. Um, if you don't know what VitaVoice is, it's our VitaCost customer advisory group. We have over 30,000 members and growing every day. You are more than welcome to join. There are no strings attached, no obligations. It's actually a really cool thing. It's, um, it's kind of like an insider access group. So whenever we have like new products or new services or like updates with our mobile app, we'll come to you guys and they'll ask for feedback and testing and stuff like that. So it's a great way for you guys to uh, give us your feedback directly. If you think it's something that you might be interested in, just email us at j at vitacost.com. That's j a y at vitacost.com. Super easy. Just email email us and we'll uh, we'll give you a little more information. So super easy. Um, all right, so now I think we should just get right into it. That's all the intros I'm going to talk about <laughs> right now. Um, so, Tammy, we're here because of Enjoy Life, yes. and it's Yay. an awesome brand. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Absolutely. So I will tell you that Enjoy Life personally is one of my favorite brands. Um, at VitaCost, we carry the full line of Enjoy Life. We currently carry about 43 products. We just added six new SKUs. We added mini cookies. They're so oh, good. They're awesome. <laughs> they're really good. They come in little snack packs. I think they're six per box. You have to try it. Um, top selling flavor right now is the Snickerdoodle. And just a little sneak peek. In about a week or so time, we'll be adding another mini cookie flavor. And it is the double chocolate brownie. Which is my favorite. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Um, <clears throat> In our house, Enjoy Life is a staple in our pantry. We have a household that is peanut-free, tree-nut-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. So there's not a lot of products that we could eat without really having to worry about what's in them. We don't have to worry about Enjoy Life at all because they're free from the top eight allergens. So we know as a family that we can eat every single one of their products and not have to worry about it. So it's, it's pretty cool. So now I will turn it over to Chef Kendra at Enjoy Life. Hi guys, thanks for spending your next hour with us. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna do a little recipe demo and then you'll get the recipe Vitacost is gonna put it online. So something fun for you to make this weekend. Um, just a little introduction about who I am and what I do. I am the consulting chef for Enjoy Life Foods. It's such a fun brand to work for. I do everything from recipe testing to product development for some of the things that they're working on to going to trade shows and talking to everybody about how much they love the brand, which is one of my favorite things to do is meet everybody. <laughs> so I've cooked my whole life. I grew up in the kitchen with my mom. I was a vegetarian when I was a teenager, so that led me to cook a lot more. Started a little catering company in high school and then went to college for food science and nutrition, which was super fun. Um, post that, I tried to figure out how to marry like my love of food and my love of nutrition and cooking. I worked for William Sonoma for a little bit, did some culinary programs with them, and then my first private chef client landed kind of in my lap. I was just cooking some meals for a really busy family. They wanted healthy meals for, you know, mom, dad, and the kids. And I did that for a little bit, and it was wonderful. And then I had another client that we had talked about a little bit earlier yeah. who kind of switched my focus on my business. They had a son who had some uh, kind of harsh behavioral things going on and they really wanted to treat it with food and therapy and all those things. So I went into their family's house, helped the dad learn how to make meals that the whole family could enjoy, mm -hmm. helped everybody understand that they could eat the same thing at the same time at the same table. Yeah. And it really changed their family dynamic and that shifted the way that my business worked because I wanted to work with families that had an issue that they needed help with that I I love to cook, they needed help with the food issue, and it just seemed like a really easy marriage. And so that's, that's awesome. our focus now is families that have food sensitivities or food allergies or specific yep. issues they want to mm -hmm. use food to combat. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. So fun. Yeah. Are you ready to cook? I think so. Okay. I think it's time to cook. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get out of your kitchen. All right. Well, thanks, ladies. But you're going to have to come back later to yeah. try it. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the griddle on. Um, one of 
my most favorite products that we launched last spring was actually a line of baking mixes. I don't know if you guys have seen them before or not. Um, the pancake and waffle mix is awesome. Because again, like everything else in our brand promise, it's free of the top eight, which I have found is really difficult to find in a mix, let alone a mix that actually tastes good, that has a shelf-stable probiotic, that has fiber, that has protein, and is low in sugar. So, back to Lysha. So I like to take this mix and kind of jazz it up a little bit. So we're calling these Nutty Buddy Pancakes, and we're gonna add some of my favorite Enjoy Life mini chips. We're gonna add some toasted sunflower seed kernels, and we're gonna add some sunflower seed spread, and it makes this like super gooey, delicious, decadent breakfast. <laughs> you can eat your breakfast and it's totally fine. So the nice thing about these mixes also is that all you do is add oil and water in all five mixes. So I have this together already. You just dump it in, whisk it up. We'll see how quickly my griddle wants to warm up for me. Um, but I can tell you about the other mixes also. There's a uh, pizza crust, there's an all-purpose flour, there's a muffin mix. Um, they're really, really nice to have around just to keep in your pantry for those days that you don't necessarily want to make something from scratch. Okay, all right. So, when you have your skillet, if you want to use one of these electric griddles, they're really, really nice because you can kind of control the temperature and keep it even. You can also do it on the stove, again, which is very easy. Um, and this one has pancakes and waffles. So pick your favorite flavors and make that your own flavor. You know, you can add fruit to it. You can add seeds to it. Um, Vitacost has a myriad of really fun things that you can pop in there. Um, I, of course, like to add chocolate chips because everything is better with chocolate, in my opinion. All right. So, let's see if this guy. Oh, he's not on, little buddy. You know what? I think that we might have unplugged the plug, so I'm gonna. <laughs> Should warm up in just a second. Should warm up in just a second. If you have one of these electric griddles, it's usually like between, like around 350 is probably a good temperature to have it at. And you want to put just a little bit of something on there to prevent the pancake from sticking. Whether it's you know sunflower seed oil, safflower oil, you could use olive oil, um, anything that your family can handle. Um, and then I actually have some of my other favorite things that I like to top the pancakes with over here. If you can handle coconut, coconut flakes are really nice. And then fresh fruit is really good too. So um, blueberries you can put in there and they kind of cook a little bit. Some sliced strawberries are really nice. If you slice bananas and then put them on the uncooked layer and flip it over, they kind of caramelize like a banana's foster. It's really delicious. A little cinnamon. Got some fun stuff going on there. So, okay, the good thing about these is that they warm up pretty quickly. So, Let's do a little bit of this. And I'm just going to kind of spread it around a little bit. If you have a pastry brush, that's actually a really great way um, to get that. Or if you have one of those really fun um, misters, you can put your own oil in there um, and spray it that way. That's really nice, too. All right, so let's see how this guy's going. See if it sizzles. Not quite sizzling yet, but that's okay. You'll get the gist of it. We're going to then. Oh, I see it. It's starting. It's wanting to work with me so badly. So I like to put a few of these little sunflower seed kernels on there and a few of the chocolate chips. You could also melt the chocolate chips with the sunflower seed spread and make it like a really yummy drizzle that you put on top. Something fun, maybe like for your birthday, for that brunch, or that type of thing. All right. There we go. That's starting to look good. They cook really quickly too, which is the nice thing. So just like a standard pancake, you want to look for it to, you know, kind of be cooking on the edge and bubble up a little bit. So I'm going to 
a few more on. I might want to thin this out too so you can make thinner pancakes. The nice thing actually about this, we have a recipe on the Enjoy Life website. Um, you can make crepes with it. So if you thought you know, that you were gluten-free and dairy-free and egg-free that you would never have crepes again, you can totally thin this out with water. Even if you just want like a thinner pancake or if you want to make a crepe, then you can do that too. So let's do another one like this. And then I'm going to thin it out so you guys can see um, how flexible the mix is. It's really nice to work with. So, so one of my favorite things growing up was always breakfast for dinner. Loved breakfast for dinner. It was like either, you know, scrambled eggs or French toast or something like that. And if you don't do breakfast for dinner, I highly suggest that you start. Um, it's just a fun way to kind of mix it up a little bit. You know, make some fruit kebabs, make some pancakes, maybe make some crepes. You can use this mix also, actually, and I think this recipe is also on the Enjoy Life website. You can make um, savory crepes. So you can fill it with, like, shredded chicken. You can put in some roasted veggies. Um, you can make my favorite allergy-friendly bechamel that's also on the website. And put it in there, like a super decadent, creamy, yummy crepe for dinner. I mean, who wouldn't like that? So you can see how different this mix is now. I added some more water to it. And that's, like, if you kept thinning it out, that's how you would make the crepes. It's actually starting to smell good in here. I wish you guys could smell it. Sorry. All right. We've been talking today. Everyone's been so excited to eat these for dessert, <laughs> which I fully support. Okay, but you can see how like, these thick ones are really puffing up, which is actually uh, really hard to do in a gluten-free mix alone, let alone one that's free of the top eight. Let's see how that top one looks. Oh yeah. I'm gonna press that down. And then that chocolate's gonna get like all melty and delicious. Come on, all money. Yeah. So good. I just ate, literally, and I think I'm hungry again. Look and smell so good. So we were talking earlier about how do you make a perfect pancake? And I think everyone has their own trick, everyone has their favorite recipe and whatnot. I really believe that your first one or two pancakes, they're gonna be trial pancakes. Give them to the dog, eat them you know, while you're cooking as your treat for being the cook or whatnot. But as you can see, the first one is kind of like a little test. You know, you wanna see how hot the griddle is. You wanna see how the batter works. Do you need to add more liquid? Do you wanna add more filling? So don't be too hard on yourself. Let the, the first one or two kind of be what they are. Yum, yum, yum. I, of course, am going to add more chocolate chips to this because I think it's delicious. And then just wait until we drizzle the sunflower seed spread. It's going to melt and be like yummy and make this really delicious sauce. And then I'm going to have all the bite cost people come in here and just go to town. This reminds me of growing up when like your mom or somebody is melting chocolate. It's such a distinct smell when you smell melting chocolate. It just makes me happy. Another thing that you can do, which we actually did at um, one of the shows I was with Enjoy Life at, we put the mix in um, like a squirt bottle and you can draw names and you can draw hearts. You can do like a Mickey Mouse face. Um, Pancakes are just fun. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. All right. And then I'm going um, to plate this and make it look all pretty and fancy so you guys can see. It's just it's fun when you make things look like if you were at a restaurant. And then you're going to, you know, treat your family a little bit. All right. So I think this back one is done. Put that there. I'm going to start adding some more chocolate, just because I can. Delicious. I hope you guys all have like a bag of Enjoy Life mini chips at home, and I've now inspired you to start eating them while you're watching me through the rest of this. Because <laughs> they're so good. They don't last very long in my house. 
Kendra, I have a pancake question. Why yes. are making those pancakes? Yes. And Jonica wants to know why her first couple of pancakes come out amazing and the rest are kind of overdone and crispy. <sighs> that is interesting because it's usually the opposite. But what does make sense is that your griddle, the first few pancakes, is going to be a very different temperature than the last. So my guess is that maybe Angela is preheating the pan not too long, and then she puts those pancakes on, and they're beautiful, but then she leaves it on a high heat, and it just keeps getting warmer and warmer and warmer. So I would say turn it down a little bit after those first few pancakes. Like if you're cooking on high, turn it to a medium, and then that should even it out. I just love these. And I like to make these tiny because everything in tiny form is, I think, like 100 times better. Who doesn't like little things? Especially if it's like little food things. Okay. Delicious. This is a fun thing to do with your kids, too. I mean, you saw how easy it was to make that mix. Like... Have your kids pour in the water. Have them pour in the oil. You know, have them put the toppings on. It's a really fun way to get everybody cooking, um, especially in a really safe way because you know that they're all guaranteed to be free of the top eight. Um. So good. Another thing that I like to do for breakfast because in my house it's, a very busy morning. Um, we try to do things ahead of time that we can have at the ready for breakfast. So these are really great because you can make them and then put them in individual baggies and freeze them. So when you want to have them for breakfast, pop it in your toaster oven, you can you know, warm it in the oven, you can put it back on the pan with a lid on it and that would be awesome too. I think breakfast is tricky for everybody. So any way that you can you know, help save your life in the morning, save some time. It's always a good thing, right? Okay. I mean, if these are adult pancakes, you could sprinkle a little espresso powder in there. I'm just saying. Some, uh, someone had an idea to put a little cocoa powder. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate. The more chocolate, the better. <laughs> I, I like that person. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's some really fun stuff you could do to this, too, depending on, you could add hemp seeds, you can add, you know, there's some cool powders now, like baobab powder or maca powder. There's lots of really cool ways that you can um, kind of jazz these up, make them healthier, make them more decadent. Um, again, make them savory. All right, I'm just gonna do a few more of these, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna have some taste testers come, and we're gonna chat some more. What's baobab? Um, baobab is super high in vitamin C, so it's a fruit, um, and they I can't remember the, the company that I've seen, um, but they make little fruit juice, and they also make a powder. It's flavorless. It doesn't smell like anything, and you just pop it. Like I put it in my smoothie. I put it in my oatmeal, and you just stir it in. It's a really nice. Um, a good, a good little source of antioxidants and some vitamin C. Oh, yeah. See, I'm making these more chocolatey. These are the ones that I'm liking. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm that Vitacost does sell Veobald powder. Yes! Vitacost! <laughs> Me gusta. Oh, my God. Did you hear, did you hear that crinkle? of the amount of chocolate chips that I just put in those two pancakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. These are going to be delish. Um, all right, ladies. Liz, if you want to come on over here and try a pancake, who, who wants to try some pancakes? They're delicious. Let's do it. Here, let me put them on a plate for you. Right. I'm making them all pancakes. ready. So you can Ooh. see... So this, I can actually eat these with my hands. You totally can. Because they're so tiny. Can they put some sunflower seeds? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Butter on top of mine? Yeah. <laughs> this is for sure how I would eat mine. Okay. You do it up the way you would <laughs> because the sunflower seed spread melts and it's like just ridiculous. Oh my gosh. It's so good. <laughs> Loading that. It's so there. good. It's okay. <laughs> it's I'll easier to, if you, if you warm it, it's easier to spread. But, um, and again, because it's me, I'm going to put some more chocolate chips on it. Love nice. it. But look how, like, it's such a happy little plate. <laughs> it's so yummy. Very kid friendly. I love it. Yeah, true. Yeah. All right. You guys want to try it? Ready. Yeah. Okay. Ready. 
Do you want to not mess up the pretty one? No, you get okay. at it. Okay. I like nothing more than when people eat something <laughs> so lovely like that. Actually, I'm you know sorry. what? I okay, good job, girls. It's just like a little mm-hmm. appetizer, <laughs> mini it dessert. Is. It is. So well, Kendra, yes. after. if you mix the chocolate mind. chips into the batter, yes. will it work just as well? It will. It will. They won't. Um, I like to put them on top because they get kind of like cooked on the outside, so they get crunchy. So you get a different texture, but you could totally put them in. The only challenge is that if you mix them in the batter before you put it on here, they're heavier, so they'll sink to the bottom. So your first batch of pancakes won't have that many, but your last batch will have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> These are, are they so good? delicious. I know. Yeah. Um, um, that pancake mix is my gosh, right? Oh, Does oh, yeah. sun butter melted yeah. <laughs> and warm? I know. I don't know why I've never done this it's before. Cr- it's decadent. Mm-hmm. This is delicious. Mm-hmm. But there's some good stuff in there, too. You know, yeah, you're getting I know. probiotics, you're getting fiber. Yeah. yeah, that crunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's from the, the chocolate that kind of cooks on the little griddle. Well, on the seeds, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm chocolate all over my head. Mm. Super delicious. <laughs> this is what everyone should make for brunch this week. It's always better when it's messy. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. Really good. Kendra, there's no milk in these, right? That is correct. Yep. Everything that we do is free of the top eight, which includes milk. Great. And you don't need milk. You don't know. Um, actually, all of the mixes only use, or they only need oil and water. I mean, it's like the, the easiest thing ever. Right. <laughs> and there's no milk, dairy, and the chocolate chips. Nope. No. Mm-mm. So. No, they're great. It's. I mean, it's a really there. clean, simple chocolate chip, kind of the way they should be. But it tastes, I mean, delicious. they taste yeah. just like chocolate. Right? right? I always have, I bought two bags. They're always in my, yeah. always yeah. In my pantry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The chunks I like, too. So if you're doing a bigger pancake, you can use the mega chunks to, like, make yeah. a pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yes. See. Yes. Like an mm-hmm. Uncle Buck. If you can see Uncle Buck and he makes those giant pancakes, yes. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Dress it up. What you thinking? That is when you should use the mega chunks. Probably not the mini chips. Good yeah. advice. Very good. Advice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. Delicious. I'm happy to happy to answer more questions. So if you guys have more questions, send, send them, them our way. I'm at your disposal. Yeah. I have a question. When yes. you um when you're traveling, like yep, you are now. Yep. Um, what? How do you stay gluten free or dairy free? And I, it's actually it's such a good question. I get asked that all the time. So I usually travel with a like a green powder that has probiotic in it. Okay. I find that that always helps me just in case there's something that yeah. doesn't sit well with me. I also always travel with my own food into the airport, which mm-hmm. you can you can bring in an extra bag of your own food. Sure. So. Especially if you have really severe allergies and you don't know and you don't want to deal with trying the airport food, bring it from home. Like, I'll make myself an omelet and bring it. I'm, I'm that person who brings, like, yeah. you know, vegan sushi from home. Like, it's, I just think it's always easier and then you're guaranteed that you know. Right. And that way I'm not feeling bad going into the plane. Um, yeah, and then I think it's important to seek out restaurants where you're going that you know will have options for you. Mm-hmm. So in every city now, there's really some great options, but it just helps to know before you get there where they are and mm-hmm. what they serve and all that. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know that you, like, have an early flight tomorrow morning, right? I do. So I do. There's really not going to be anything open mm-hmm. probably when you go to the airport. No. So I have, prepared. yes, I have the green powder, and I have another bar that um, I made from home that I right. wrapped up, and it's going to bring with me. Okay. It's just nice to know that you have something. Otherwise, you're scrambling, and your blood sugar's low, and it's oh, and you're it's hangry. a disaster. <laughs> and then you're hangry. No one wants anyone. to be around me when I'm hangry. <laughs> What is that green powder with the probiotics? Uh, green vibrant something. I purchase it at Whole Foods. Um, comes or probably from Vibrant. Or you guys probably do have it too. Um, it's it's just a little packet. It's um, oh, so that's great. So it's portable. Oh yeah, a little packet. Yep. It's I mean it's seriously oh, like think about that. We do sell green vibrant packets. Yes, that's it. Uh, Vitacos. I'm always there for you. I know. You guys are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really like that. And you can put it in smoothies. You can put it in water. It's kind of weird to put it in water if you're not used to a green liquid that you're yeah. drinking. Yeah. It's just straight green. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. straight green. Right. But I like, I like having it. All right. I'm going to pull these guys off. So those pancakes, um, cats noticing that you can pick them up like a cookie, are they stiffer than usual pancakes? Well, these are falling apart a little bit when I pick them up, but they're also tiny, 
So when, yeah. when they're smaller and they're real, they're thick. Um, so that way, mm-hmm. it's a little bit easier. If it's a, when they're bigger, like when you make a larger size pancake, um, you definitely they would they would bend. They would you know break in half. You wouldn't want to use a knife and fork. No, this is a pretty like dense yeah. feel. Like this is gonna fill me up, right? But it's not dry. I think. Mm, no. I think I, when you Nothing see a pancake that's, that's not you know kind of loosey goosey, you might think it's dry. But this I like a lot because it's, um, it's definitely a moist pancake mix. Mm-hmm. Can you can you add something like pumpkin puree? Ainsley wants to know if you can add pumpkin puree to like substitute totally. some of the liquid. How would you yeah. do that? I would do. I mean, the pumpkin is thicker than the water, so you, you in this one, I think you use you use one and a half cups of water in this. So I would say use maybe one cup of water and then a third cup of pumpkin. Um, or start with a quarter cup of pumpkin, and if you ta- maybe taste the batter, if you want more pumpkin flavor, add more to it. Right. It's a pretty easy. I mean, you saw I just added water to it, and it changed the way that I wanted it to. So you can f- totally play with it, um, and I think it's a really easy batter to work with. So. And you can taste the batter because there's no ice. Exactly. Exactly. Uh huh. That's the beauty of it. You can eat it raw. <laughs> You can. And we might, because there's actually quite a <laughs> bit of batter left. Uh-huh. We're all going to be eating pancakes. Good, like this soon. Have you ever eaten these pancakes cold? I have a weird thing about food that's supposed to be hot that you eat cold. Like, I can't do cold pizza. I can't do... No. <laughs> so, I, I have not, but I'm sure they're equally delicious. <laughs> but you could probably... Use, I mean, you... I don't see why you couldn't. No, it's no. It's a matter not? of, like, a yummy... Flavor. I just have a weird temperature thing. Yeah. Everyone's different. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. We need to. I need to, t- to show you guys the other mixes too. Fun. Yeah. So there's. Let's say it again. You have brownie. There's the brownie. There's the pancake and waffle. There's mm-hmm. all-purpose flour. There's a muffin mix. There's brownie, pancake, waffle, all-purpose flour. I feel like I'm missing a mix. Okay. I feel like I'm missing a mix. I'm well, going to have to look them up and get them to one. Good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you just throw this in a same batter, same mm-hmm. recipe. Pizza. Pizza crust. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's actually one of my favorite ones. And I've made a coffee cake with pizza crust. Really? Uh-huh. How do you do that? It's a really um, basic dough. It's an awesome dough, but there's not a ton of crazy flavor in it because we wanted you to be able to customize it. Right. So that way you can actually make it into like a sweet dough. So I, mm-hmm. you pat it out, the recipe's on um, the Enjoy Life website. Okay. You pat it out and you kind of snip it if you've ever made any sort of braided bread or anything like that. Oh yeah. Fill gotcha. it with what you want, fold it back over, and then you make it out. It's so good. Mm. It's super delicious, yeah. But it makes a really awesome pizza crust too. And you can actually, you can make mini ones. You can bake them and freeze them. Okay. Yeah. We made some really good bread sticks at one of the shows that we were at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. Delicious. Great bread alternative. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And I keep the all-purpose flour around. Actually, all my clients, I have the all-purpose flour stocked because they'll, you know, I'll get to their house in the last minute. They'll be like, "Can you make us some cookies?" And everyone has, you know, like 17 allergies. So I'm able to use um, the the. The mix. mix. Yeah. Thank you. The flour. Yeah. Um, and then I don't have to worry about it. So you were telling us earlier you have a couple of allergies yourself, right? I, yes. I am gluten-free and dairy-free. So, which is, and it's nice, obviously, to be able to work with a brand where I can test the recipes and right. actually eat them all. Right. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Because there's been times where I, I test a recipe and then I have to ask someone else to try it <laughs> or, like, I just have to think about the theory and, like, sure, the theory sounds great. And mm-hmm. then, you know, have them try ultimately and then just shift it from there but it's nice again it's nice to be able to eat everything (laughs) that I test especially when it includes chocolate so for those who don't know and who aren't familiar maybe what are the top eight allergens that enjoy like products are free of yes so the U.S. recognizes eight allergens as constituting about 90 percent of the allergic reactions and it's um gluten soy tree nuts peanuts fish shellfish eggs and dairy and then they also Um, There's only one product that has corn in it, and it's one of the flavors of the Plentils. If you need that information, Enjoy Life for sure has it on their website. Um, There's no potato and no sesame either, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that's great. Mm -hmm. Extra layers of comfort. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been gluten-free? I've been gluten-free now six years. 
Okay. okay. Yeah, it's been about six years. Okay. And it's funny, and the more people that you talk to who are diagnosed later in life, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, yeah, I thought I was fine, I thought I was fine, until I stopped eating mm -hmm. that thing. And then I thought, oh, like, this is how people feel. Right. This, <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> this is what it's like to be a normal yeah. person. Right. So it wasn't until I removed gluten. I've always been dairy-free, like, since I was a baby. Um, but since I removed gluten, I changes everything. Changes everything. Yeah. 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 Um, how are like how would you substitute for dairy like cheese? What are some of your favorite cheese substitutes? Uh, there's a lot of brands now that do dairy substitutes. It really depends on what allergies you have. Mm -hmm. I don't have any nut allergies, so I'm able to go the coconut route and I'm able to go the almond milk route. Um, mm -hmm. But there's some really cool. There's quinoa milk now. The rice milk is great. Mm -hmm. There's hemp seed milk that's really delicious. Right. And they're actually they're all really easy to make too. Hemp seed milk is really super easy, and you can get I'm sure hemp seeds from Vitagos. You can. And <laughs> hemp seed milk. Yes. Yeah. See. Perfect. <laughs> milk. Perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah. So I mean, those are the milks that I usually have a substitute milk at home, so I can have cereal or I can put it yeah. in my coffee or do that kind of thing. You can also make um, bechamel, like a cream, like an Alfredo sauce, oh. really easily with just rice flour, rice milk, and then your favorite allergy-free butter margarine substitute mm -hmm. in situation. Could you use oil in that? Um, it's better if you use one of the things that has kind of like a butter flavor to it. Okay. Um, just to get that same feeling of actual bechamel. And that recipe actually is one that we also filmed and did for Enjoy Life with the uh, macaroni and cheese, I believe. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Every, everyone ate it. Yeah, <laughs> I would eat that in a heartbeat. And beef stroganoff, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, very creamy. Yeah, cool. yeah, super good. It's, just, right. it's like a bowl of comfort on noodles. And it's delicious. <laughs> so, yeah. So that used the Enjoy Life flour and then um, rice milk and then again the dairy, or the margarine, or Butter substitute, substitute, whatever your favorite right. is. You have yeah. a question? Yep, Phyllis has a great question about um, some good recipes, maybe off the top of your head, for someone who has multiple allergies, dairy, egg, and gluten. Oh my God, Phyllis, so many fun recipes for you, young lady. Um, for sure, I'd say go to the Enjoy Life website. Most of those recipes are recipes that I've created for them, and they're free of the top eight. So that includes what was just mentioned that you are not able to eat. And my whole thing is what you can't eat, you should have. You should be able to put something back in your diet. Like you shouldn't go into cooking and food being like, I, can, oh, I can't eat X, Y, Z. No, there's like a million awesome things. So just take that as a reason to like explore more and find other really cool foods yeah. that you can bring into your life. Um, so off the top of my head, one of my favorite recipes actually that we did for Enjoy Life, it was one of the first things we did at a show was a plentil crusted chicken tender. Yeah. So the plentil chips that we have, you grind them up like breadcrumbs, yeah. and you take chicken tenders. If you thin out a little bit of allergy friendly mayo, like okay. there's, there's a couple brands that are free of the top eight, thin that with a little bit of rice milk, and then you just roll it in the lentils uh -huh. that are breadcrumbs, and then you bake them. So that would be awesome. I think that recipe might be on the Vitacost blog as oh, good. well as okay, good. Okay, so good. Just perfect. If, it's seriously one of my favorite things. I mean, every yeah. show we do it at, people like clamor to get the first one off the grill. So yeah, yeah, that's super good. There's plenty. Definitely go to the Enjoy Life website, and you'll find a myriad. David has a great question about pancakes. Yes. What's the wildest pancake that you've ever made? <gasps> oh, wildest pancake that I've ever made. I mean, that's a good question. I don't know that I get too wild. It, a lot of chocolate. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I've established <laughs> that that's actually part of my food guide pyramid. Um, <laughs> there's a layer for chocolate. So the wildest. Maybe like hemp seed, goji berry. I think I put maca powder. Um, in one. Yeah. Cocoa powder. Right. What else did I put in there? Chocolate, obviously. Um, that might that might have been it. And I like to rehydrate the goji berries so they're not hard. You want to you want to have them nice and soft. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. So just put them in boiling water, let them sit a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was pretty good. Anne has a question of specifically about the pancake mix. Do you know how much sugar is in the pancake? I mix? think it's five grams of sugar actually. They're really all the mixes are really low, which makes me very happy. Yeah, five grams. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then if you just add fruit to it, 
Um, like we were talking earlier, if you add blueberries or if you add the bananas to the actual pancake, that kind of caramelizes and can get enough sugar in there. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's enjoyable without extra syrup. And yeah. then you're just getting the fruit from, uh, or the sugar from the fruit. Right. Natural source. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a cookie question. A cookie question? This is my favorite. Oh. Uh, Tisha wants to know, which flour and egg substitutes are best for chewy, making chewy cookies? It's actually not even that necessarily. You need to add a starch. So if you add um, tapioca starch, which is from a root vegetable that's free the top eight, that is going to help make it nice and chewy and light and soft. So I, conveniently, I did a soft lemon cookie recipe. And that is, again, on the website, um, and that has the starch in it. So mm -hmm. it's really the starch that actually helps make it nice and chewy and fluffy and light. Okay. But would you still use an egg substitute, like a flat set? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You would definitely want to use that. Like, So if you're taking, let's say, a chocolate chip cookie recipe and mm -hmm. you just want to make it softer, uh -huh. um, you would actually add a little bit more flour than your recipe calls for. And including starch. So you would use like the Enjoy Life all-purpose flour, add a little bit more tapioca starch, mm -hmm. maybe like 20%. Um, and then you would do your standard egg substitute, whether mm -hmm. it's a chia egg or a flax egg or your favorite, you know, powder, egg-free egg, sub. Egg so. powder, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Got it. These are good questions, you guys. They are. Thanks. So I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Mm -hmm. Linda mm -hmm. wants to know if Enjoy Life has any plans to make products with a sugar alternative. Amen. Oh, I don't. I don't know actually. Mm. Not that I know of. But I will. Say, I mean, one of the things again, I know I mentioned it about the mixes that I like is that they really are super low in sugar. So even though they do still have some sugar, it's from a really natural source. It's not processed, um, and it's, it's five grams. I think in all the mixes actually it's five grams, which is lower than most yogurts. Yeah. So yes, yeah, it is actually. Um, and I think most of their products are non-GMO. All of them. All of them. They are all so, non-GMO. So the sugar mm -hmm. source. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they, they do a nice job of being super responsible. They want to make sure that they're providing a clean product. Yeah. yeah. Which is yet another reason why I love to work with them. <laughs> <laughs> and we love to work with them as well. Yeah. Win-win. So, it's a fun company. Yeah. Again, good questions, guys. Have you ever used banana flour? You know what? I just saw that at the store, actually. And I thought to myself that I really want to try this. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, they. So, um, you have something in your future. Yes, I do have something in the future. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. They, um, I read a little bit about it, and they say that you can substitute about 20% of your flour blend oh. with the banana flour. Okay. I know. All right. It's and they use green bananas, I guess, to like dehydrate okay. it essentially. Okay. So they de dehydrate and then grind. Yes. Yeah. In my brain, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. So. Again, more fun questions. Thanks, guys. Right. And you can find banana flour at Vitacosta. <gasps> Vitacost for the win! Wow, I had no idea. I, I didn't like know this. That. That's great. Thank you, Katie. I'm going to have to make some like banana flour cookies this weekend or something. Well, you should. And then you could come back. Yes! And make them for us. Yes! <laughs> I love it. Back to pancakes for a second. Yeah, oh, of course. Okay. Always back pancakes. We're making them over here. Can you freeze these pancakes? For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to freeze them um, individually. So. Actually, if you can, you know, take whatever you think a serving size for you would be. I would say for me, it's three. Wrap it in foil and then put it in a freezer-safe, resealable bag. And then all you do is just grab that single bag and you know mm. that you're ready to go. So again, pop it in. The oven is actually the best way to reheat it mm. because like what temperature? I would say 350, probably eight to ten minutes. Oh, okay. So yeah, right. it's easy. I mean, if I have breakfast stuff ready to go, yeah, I mean you can do that easy. while you're, you know, putting. Drying your hair. Totally. Just keep them in the oven. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Keep them up. Good. Can you make a cake out of any of the mixes that Enjoy Life sells? Ooh. Can you make a cake out of them? Um, the muffin mix you can make. I did like a little six inch or a five inch cake. Um, it's, it's somewhat dense, um, but it's nice if you're going to put like a fruit filling inside. Mm -hmm. Obviously the flour blend, you can make, you know, a proper cake with that. I, I probably wouldn't with the pancake and waffle. Um, uh, yeah, so I would say the muffin mix, if anything. Obviously, you can use that to make cupcakes. Yeah. Oh, I like cool. to add, big surprise, cocoa powder and chocolate, um, and then you can make your cupcakes that way. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. 
So as a chef, can you talk a little bit about maybe some trends that you're seeing in desserts? Oh, trends and desserts. Yeah, you live in a really hip city, Chicago. I know. I did just have eucalyptus ice cream the other night, you guys. All right. That's very different. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know. It was. It was. It was dairy-free milk. I didn't ask them which one they used. And then the the eucalyptus flavor, I was like, what is happening? And they had... It chocolate on top. Like very powerful in your mouth. Mm-hmm. But it was it was refreshing. Almost okay. like you're almost like you're in one of those gum commercials where they like spray Arctic snow on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like. You know the one. Um, it was very refreshing. Yeah. Um, so dessert trends. I mean, right in summer right now, I find fruit obviously the primary. Sure. Um, people, I'm seeing granola being used for a lot of toppings for desserts. Okay. Um, what else? I don't know. I don't. I, mean, I think most of the dessert that I end up getting is all chocolate, <laughs> which is always a trend. <laughs> always a trend. Always a trend. <laughs> I think it's using different flavors, like eucalyptus, using tea leaves. Right. So you know, making oh, some cool. sort of pudding. Yeah. yeah. So using tea. I just saw a cookbook on that actually, which I thought was really really interesting. So. Okay. Yeah, Vitacross just came out with our own brand of organic teas. Delicious. Yeah, yeah, we've had some uh, tea cookies. Yum. Put those on the blog, so they're the tea infused, green tea infused. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, would yeah. be really good. We should have. Uh, like a green, like, on that. yeah, a green tea pudding. I'd be real down with that. Wow, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Look at you. Yeah, yeah no. Typical chef. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Brain's working. So this mix calls for two cups of water. If you wanted to make crepes, how much more water? So this makes it's one and a half cups oh, of water. Oh, one and a half. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh, God. What did I put in the recipe? Um, and you added a little more here. I did, yeah. I did, again, I mean, for specific quantities, the recipe is online at Enjoy Life Foods. I want to say it was like two and a half cups of water. I think it was almost a full extra cup of water that I put in there um, to, yeah, to make the crepe. Okay. And you do, you kind of have to spread it out a little bit still. You want to make sure it's that nice, smooth um, surface. And then have a nice, like, this is a perfect spatula yeah, for that. Yeah, what's the trick to slipping a crepe? That's a... Uh, I actually usually use two spatulas. So okay. you can flip them kind of at the same time, so you don't have to worry about them. That's it takes some coordination, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of, job. you know, flipping with the wrists, but... Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fun. Speaking of water... <laughs> a little bit more rehydrate. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So what type of oil is your preferred oil for cooking? Um, it depends what I'm cooking. When I'm baking, I like to use safflower or sunflower oil. Okay. Um, when I'm cooking, I really do like to use. I have I have a general all-purpose olive oil, and then I have a finishing olive oil. So if I'm What's having Finishing olive oil is usually um, a smaller harvest of olives. They're usually more expensive olives, okay. cold pressed, usually a small batch. They have a very specific flavor that you don't want to chemically change when you're cooking. Okay. Um, so, okay. So yeah. A little bit stronger. Yeah. Flavor. Really fruity. Sometimes very peppery. Okay. So, like we had, we were just at a wedding last weekend actually, and one of the sides was sliced heirloom tomatoes with olive oil and salt and pepper, and it was. Mm. So delicious it's and simple. so simple. Yeah. And that's what you would want that finishing oil for. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about coconut oil? If you don't have nut allergies, coconut oil is great. Um, really high heat. You can use it to bake with. Mm-hmm. It does have uh, more fat than butter. So if you can also do dairy and you're trying to substitute it, um, you would use less coconut oil than you would butter. Um, but if you're using it as an oil mm-hmm. substitute, then it's just a one for one. But it, do, it does give you a little bit of that coconut flavor. So yeah, be a little able, sweet. Yeah, so be a little prepared for that. But that's great also if you can eat coconut. Right. There is flavorless and odorless coconut oil, so that's always an alternative. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, recipes for homemade bars? There's a couple people that are interested in making their own bars. Yes. Um, yeah, they're actually... You can use like a crisp rice as the base, and then I know you guys carry the Enjoy Life. Um, it's almost like their trail mix. Yeah, they have Beach Bash the and they have the Mambo, yeah. mm-hmm. which are awesome. Those make a really good bar because they already have um, the toasted seeds and the dried fruit in them. Right. And one of them has chocolate, so you can. <laughs> which one? 
<laughs> so you can, that's the mountain, mountain, oh, mountain. mountain. Um, the beach bash has no chocolate because it all melts on the beach. Right. Um, so you can use those along with, you know, some sort of binder, whether you use like a brown rice vinegar or, or you want to, or syrup, yes. <laughs> um, or you want to use, you know, agave nectar if you can have, if you're not vegan and you can have honey, okay. you can use that. Mm-hmm. Um, chia seeds are a really great thing to put in bars also because they'll expand, Jello. so they'll help hold everything together. Yep. Dates are actually a really great thing to use too. You can puree it, you can puree those, yeah. and they'll help bind it. Oh yeah, I make like little energy bites yeah. like every week. So good. My husband thinks I'm crazy. Um, I, mean, I don't think you're crazy. I will eat those energy bites. They're delicious. I'm sure they're yummy. And with cocoa powder or cacao powder, uh, uh-huh. straight up cacao powder, dates, maple syrup. Yep. Done. It's so. It's just like a brownie. In yeah. Mouth. It's so good. It's like a healthy truffle. It is very much like a truffle. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very creamy, uh-huh. decadent. I like this, perfect. Is the calorie count of the finished recipe available anywhere? It is not. It is not, sadly. Yeah, we will put this recipe on the Buy the Cost blog as well, and maybe we could, maybe we could get the calorie count. Might be it. Follow up. So just a question about Enjoy Life products in general. Yeah. Do they contain any artificial ingredients? No, they do not. They like to keep things nice and clean. Yeah. Which is nice. It's just, it helps when like the whole brand all comes to, you know, it's non-GMO, it's not mm-hmm. artificial. Right. It's, a, it's a nice, clean line of products. Yeah. Sort of a question about food allergies. What is the difference between a food allergy and a food intolerance? Can you talk a little bit about that? So you can have the same reaction as far as, you know, if you get a rash or you feel uncomfortable. So your symptoms can be the same if it's an allergy or if it's an intolerance. If you get an allergy, you also can have life-threatening reactions. So your throat can close up. Right. Um, You can have really serious GI issues. So celiac disease um, has some really serious GI ramifications, um, intestine ramifications. You can have tons of swelling. So a food allergy is a much more serious, you need to pay attention to right. it. And not that food intolerance isn't serious, but you don't have that same potential like threatening or yeah, longevity of it. Right. Yeah. Cool. Sort of back to your chef expertise. Yes. Right? Dave wants to know, do you use rice milk? Do you prefer rice milk or soy milk or, or what's your milk of choice and why? Uh, I like hemp milk a lot actually at home because it's really easy to make. Um, when I make hemp milk, like or unlike other milks, I don't strain it out. So I leave the hemp seeds in there after I blend it. Uh huh. So you just soak it overnight and then blend it with seeds. You soak the seeds overnight. Okay. Dump that water. Put it in a, a really high power blender is what's going to be best. You know, don't don't use your fifty dollar blender. <laughs> it's not. It's not going to make your nice milk for you. You need to invest in it. Um, And then blend it with a little bit of vanilla. If you want chocolate, you can add, you know, cacao or cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. um, And blend that up with some purified water. And it will settle in your fridge, but it will last you about five days and just give it a nice shake. I like that. It's a little bit of an earthy flavor, um, but I like that. So. Well, hip is a lot creamier than a Mm -hmm. lot of other seeds. Yeah. Like rice milk. it has that creamier. Yeah, I like to cook with rice milk. So if I'm again, if I'm making that bechamel, that creamy sauce that right. I was talking about, the rice milk work, works really, really well because it's a super mellow flavor, okay. um, but it's thin. So yeah. to your point, it doesn't have that creamy factor of the hemp milk. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Mention this. Can we talk about why is my face so hot? It's because this this thing <laughs> is still on. Can we stop and talk about chocolate for a second? Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you guys think I'm crazy? <laughs> what are your tips for like properly melting chocolate? Like, is there a secret to melting chocolate when you're like making a drizzle? There or? is. Okay. Um, so it depends what you're using it for. If you want a really thin drizzle, then you want to add some oil to it because that'll thin it out and it'll make it it'll make a, a finer stream essentially, as opposed to like a thicker layer. Um, if you're using if you're using the stove, the best way to do it is actually to have a pot, you know, let's say this is your pot, you fill this with water, and then you put a bowl that nestles kind of around it. So a double boiler. This way, exactly. Double boiler. So you can like buy a fancy double boiler or you can just use a pot and a bowl. Um, And then you put your chocolate in there and you want the water to be simmering. You put the chocolate in the bowl that you put on top 
and then you just keep stirring it. Because mm -hmm. the bottom will obviously melt faster than the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just keep stirring it. To keep moving it. Yes. How long does that take? I mean, Depends how much chocolate you're melting. Okay. Um, but it doesn't take that long. Five, six minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. totally worth it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, six minutes. Though. Oh, yeah. It's so good. And then you get to lick the spoon when you're done. And the pan. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, it's, it's, this is actually very important. Don't add water. You don't want to have water there in any capacity because water will cause mm -hmm. chocolate to seize. So if you've ever tried to melt chocolate and it forms this like hard clump yeah. that you can't move, it's probably because water has gotten in there. Okay. Water does not like chocolate. All right. They're really not. They're good. not good friends. I have, admittedly, melted chocolate with water before. <gasps> See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it does. It does clump up here. Mm -hmm. One more shop yeah. related question. Yeah. If you were going to put cacao in, the, yeah. in this recipe, how much would you put in? I would pro I would start with a tablespoon, add probably another oh. tablespoon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I think two so tablespoons. Whole batter, yeah. yeah, I think two tablespoons two is tablespoons. probably going to be fine. Okay. And again, you can always, if you have a, a really dark cocoa powder or a cacao, like depending on what kind you have and what brand you have. It's going to be more intense or less intense. If you want it to taste even more chocolatey, um, I would add a little bit of espresso powder. Because oh, yeah, coffee out and espresso brings out the flavor of chocolate. Or what about like a little pinch of salt? Totally. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you had a really nice, um, like grainy salt, yeah. you know, that you can crush in your fingers, right. sprinkle that on top. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Delicious. Nice. Oh, yes. Like this Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my favorite salt that we have. Mm -hmm. I just love it. The pink salt's actually nice. It has a lot of uh, minerals. minerals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, the trace minerals. Yeah. We all need for electrolyte. It's true. So you were talking a little bit about making this into a savory recipe. What's your favorite savory recipe that you've made with Enjoy Life products? Oh, <gasps> Guys, that's a hard question. Oh, that's okay, like when people so say, what's your favorite thing to cook? Um, I really like those plantal crusted chicken tenders. I make them all, right. all the time. They are so wow. good. You can make what them in flavor plantal. I like the garlic parmesan flavor. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah sense. it's super good. Yeah. Um, I will say I love I love the plantals actually. I don't know if that's my favorite thing to use for cooking from Enjoy Life because again the chocolate chips. Um, but I like to grind the plentils up and use them like a breadcrumb. So when I make meatballs, that's what I, I use because they're already seasoned. Okay. So you know, it's, it's just like you're using breadcrumbs from the store, but right. you know they're free of the tap eight. They already have some seasoning, and they're so yes. easy. They're so easy. Just throw them in your food processor. So yeah, I think the plentil crusted chicken tenders. They're so good. Everyone loves them. All right. Is there a, is there a meatball recipe somewhere in the toilet? There is. There's actually a Greek meatball recipe okay. that uses their dill. I think it's dill and sour cream is mm -hmm. the flavor. And it's dill, some carrots, the ground up lentils, and then turkey. Yeah. Super okay. good. Mm -hmm. What's a good sauce for that? Um, uh, it's like marinara, not really. No, I wouldn't do marinara for that. I would honestly just do a squeeze of lemon over that. Oh. You could actually make it into like a Greek lettuce wrap. A wrap put some roasted sandwich. red peppers on yeah. top of that. Some yeah. Maybe some marinated like cucumbers. You're making everybody really happy. Hi. <laughs> um, kind of speaking of the lunch arena, which you've moved into now. Yeah. Um, Mary wants to know: Are you have you tried making bread before? Like, is there a, a, a technique or a secret to making bread that's free of dairy, soy, yeast, gluten, eggs, like a lot of those ingredients? I don't venture into the bread baking situation with all those allergies. It's it's hard. It's really hard. Um, well, you were saying the pizza crust mix. The pizza crust you mix is awesome. Breadsticks. I make like a flat bread with that. Mm -hmm. So that I think actually works really nicely. If you brush it with a little bit of olive oil and then you can sprinkle some seasoning on there, that's really nice because you can use that like a pita or yeah. a flat bread. Yeah. That I find works a lot better than trying to make like a yeast. A loaf. Yeah, bread. a loaf of no bread. Surprise. A quick bread, totally. Um, we have a recipe that we use the, again, the all-purpose flour with. It's for a spiced cinnamon apple bread. And that's super, that's super good. <laughs> that's actually another one of my favorite recipes. Um, Holidays. I, yeah, yeah. Makes great gifts, P.S. Wrap it up in cute little cellophane it. with an oh, orange that. bow. Yep. Um, yeah, so as far as the yeast-raised bread, um, I kind of stick with the pizza crust to make a flatbread. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you were just talking about those chicken tenders, yes. making a sandwich. What's 
leads me to this question about mayonnaise. What's a good allergen-friendly alternative to mayo? Um, there are a couple brands on the market that are free of all of the, the top eight. Uh, I believe Earth Balance makes one. Um, they make an olive oil one. Uh, Veganaise, I think. Do you know what they're made with? Like, what's the basis? It's those? essentially oil, mm -hmm. water. Um, there's usually seasoning in there. You know, salt. I don't know if there's garlic. There might, mm, there might be mustard. I don't know if there's mustard in there. I would have to look at the ingredients. But when I do recipe testing, it's usually one of those that I work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. They definitely exist. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. I've seen them out there. Mm -hmm. We carry them. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever used sesame milk? Oh. No. Never heard of that one. I have not. It's it's one of the foods that we try to avoid using um, with Enjoy Life. Mm -hmm. There are sesame allergies. Yeah. So um, I don't really... I don't really play with that, but now I'm curious about sesame milk. I like it. I like when I hear about something that I'm not familiar yeah, with. Yeah, they're kind of, I mean, our viewers are giving us huh? some interesting tips yeah. and products. Yay, viewers. Have. So when, let's say for a second that you're making s'mores. Just imagine that for a second. Okay. What would be your Enjoy Life cookie exactly. of choice to use to make? The gram, the honey gram. The honey graham cookie is actually how I make my s'mores. Um, it's delicious. And then, yeah, and then I use the Enjoy Life bars. And you just okay. kind of snap those off. Um, and you can actually, there's not a marshmallow that's free of the top eight that I have been able to find. Yeah. But you can make this really interesting fluff, fluff. using mm -hmm. chickpea water. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Aquafaba. Yes. It's super easy. You would not think that it's actually going to work. But you take the liquid from the can of chickpeas, you put it in your KitchenAid or mm -hmm. whatever stand mixer you have, right. you turn it on high, and you like walk away for yeah. like eight solid minutes, and you think it's never gonna, it's never gonna work, and it does. It does come together. It's the so craziest thing in the world. You just have to be patient. Yeah. And if you leave it in the fridge to continue to continue the deliciousness the next day, you just need to re-whip it. But it does okay. make this like beautiful foam, and you just add a little bit of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Yeah. I think I've heard that aquafaba, there's like other, is it, can you get that from other beans or is it just chickpeas? Chickpeas is the most popular. Yeah. I think because it's just the easiest. The chickpeas such a solid bean. It's really easy yeah. to separate out, um, but you can get it from other beans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two more questions. Yeah. So what's a great allergy, really quick, what's a good allergy friendly pudding recipe that you know of? There's one on the Enjoy Life Foods website <laughs> <laughs> that I have created. Um, yes, it uses, I think, rice milk. Uh, chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> I actually think it's vanilla. What? I think it's vanilla. Um, yeah, it's rice milk. I'm pretty sure there's tapioca starch in there. There's a, it's a layered pudding that um, oh. that is on the website that you'll find, I think, under the dessert section. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's layered, like layered it's, with. It's layered with, I think, some crushed cookies that we have. Gotcha. The trick that I found to making a pudding free of the top eight is that you can't let it cook as long as you would other puddings okay. because it actually reverses. It gets thinner the longer you let it cook. Okay. So as soon as it thickens up, stop. Take it out. Heat. Last question. Yeah. And this is about chocolate. Yes. <laughs> and I think you know the answer. <laughs> Does Enjoy Life have chocolate bars? Yes, they do. And they have chocolate bars that are like a milk chocolate. They have one that's like a darker chocolate. To please everyone's palate. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're super good. Those are awesome questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We're going to wrap it up and finish eating our pancakes. And hopefully you've made your own pancakes. So you can eat those up, gobble them up. Um, thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.